Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Ally, and I'm here with Amy Westmoreland. And welcome to my channel. We are continuing a conversation that we started on Amy's channel about putting it to the test. So if you'd like to see this, um, check out Amy's channel. Yeah, it's Illuminating Joy. Part one of this conversation is over there. And this is the second part. So let's just jump right into it because we're having an amazing conversation, aren't we? Yes, we are. Perfect. <laughs> All right. And like one of the cool things too is like, you know, at first, yeah, it could be a little, uh, we're watching our thoughts. We're, we're injecting thoughts into our mind. We are emulating the natural process of creation. But, um, you know, it just like the, the negative thoughts then start to vanish because we're constantly thinking about the solution instead of the problem, you know? So it ends up helping and it just becomes habitual, natural. Yeah. And um, the other thing too, is you can use it for anything and everything. And I think people want, a lot of people want to know, like, what can you use it for? What are the limitations? I haven't found a limitation yet. Me neither. I, ne I have um, anything. I, I believe that all things are possible. Um, I've used it for so many different things. And like you said, I've never found one. Anything I can think of and conceive and that I've tried to manifest has manifested, you know? Yeah, same, same with me. And it doesn't matter how complicated it seems to your like rational minds. It, when it happens, it seems like, oh, well that was, that was pretty easy. <laughs> That's right. You can see how complicated it might've been for things to be orchestrated, but, but it always has like this really natural grace to it when it shows up. That's right. It's like per it, the things that I've manifested that I'm not using my own willpower to get are always so perfect. Uh, the, I don't know any other way to put it except for perfect, you know, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's perfect. And sometimes people will be like, but I want to take action. I'm like, trust me, you don't, you just, you want to have it. Hand it's like handed to you. Yes. Yes, uh, 100%, because you, uh, what I practice is trying to, as little as possible, use my willpower in this world, you know? Imagining, like, if something needs to be done by me, I'll be moved to do it automatically if that's what's necessary for me to right. get it, you know? But but not me forcing and moving and um, whatever, because that's the opposite, right? It's imagination comes first. It's imagining comes first in everything. And then we are moved through compulsion to, to fulfill the thing or other people are moved to fulfill, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so some people will, in the community will refer to that as like inspired action, but basically it's action that you take that you're not thinking it's related. So you just automatically take it. So it's not like you're debating, well, should I do this? Or as soon as you're debating it, that's not the automatic thing. Cause a lot of people question, um, well, this person had to take that action to get the result. Yeah, but they didn't know they were taking that action to produce the result. They were just sort of bebopping along through their life. And they're like, oh, I'm going to go to the store. And then there's their manifestation type of thing. That's right. And I have like a mini story um, just to like, mm -hmm. so Neville calls it a natural bridge of incidents, right? So yeah. it's natural. It's something that happens automatically. But I remember I was on my way to work and I don't know why. I just have silly thoughts. I play around with this stuff, but I imagined whistling at my desk right walking up and whistling happy at my desk so anyway i go up the elevator i just forget because whatever it's just a stupid thought that i had in my mind walk up the stairs walk to my desk and i was whistling and it wasn't until two seconds later that i realized that i was doing it automatically i didn't think about whistling and that's exactly the point it's like automatically we will be moved like subconsciously we will be moved naturally to do these things not through force yeah yeah, and you know, it's interesting too, because I actually use that sometimes if I have something I need to do, like in my, my world, and I don't feel motivated to do it, I will imagine myself completing the task and being like crossing it off my list. And then I will give myself a few days because I know at some point I will be naturally motivated and inspired to do it at a time that works better for me within my schedule. Um, I'm really experienced with that. So if you really have something on your to-do list for the viewers out there and you need to get it done, maybe don't try that the first day, but <laughs> but it is helpful because it, it will actually motivate yourself to do that, like the whistling thing, yeah. And I actually, with what you just said, I use that, if I'm in a mood that I don't like, what I'll do is I'll imagine a few minutes from now in the mood that I wanna be in, right? Even if I'm miserable and grumpy and aggravated, I will bring myself, I'll, I'll imagine that I'm looking through my own eyes within a few minutes from now and just smiling and say, wow, I'm happy. And even that, it seems like whatever it is that conspires to 
inspire my action, right? It will do so. And I'll normally end up in that mood. Maybe it's not within a few minutes, but something will happen that will end me up in that mood that I want to be in. Right. So I think, um, the, one of the things that's hardest for people that maybe you and I should help explain to them is this living in the end, living in the solution. It's a, it's a skill. You get better and better at identifying the turnaround because I think a lot of people are focused on trying to overcome the problem and that's not what we're talking about. You sort of like mm, leave it in your mind and you go to the wish fulfill, the solution, you, it's already been finished mentally and then you just sort of let the bridge of incidents take care of everything in between, right? So yeah. how did you get really good at living in the end? Um, I mean, like you said, practice, right? Like it becomes a a habit where I don't any mostly I can't say all the time but most of the issues that I encounter in my day-to-day -day life whatever they are I automatically know because of the years of practice mm -hmm. I know the solution what's the solution live in the end and it's like what does that mean it literally just means pick a time and place where that desire is fulfilled and imagine that right so what I'll do is I'll conjure that I'll think of whatever it is automatically you know, um, automatically, I mean, I know now through practice to think of the end when a problem comes up. And when I do that, um, like you said, I will imagine for a second, I'll sometimes a second, depending, it's not all the, it's not exact every time, right? It's like, a, right. I, I like to test it and try different things um, or whatever, whenever I can make it feel real. And then I will try to the best of my ability to drop what I'm, to drop that desire, like, because the feeling of still having a desire is just saying to yourself, I don't have it yet, right? So to yes. imagine that end and then averting my attention to something completely different, if, if at all possible. Yeah, so I use mental conversation to drop the desire. I talk about it in a lot of my videos about detaching. I word it differently depending on the subject, how, um, how focused I am on it. I will start talking to myself after I've moved into living in the end and in my imagination. I come out of that and then I'm like, okay, I would really like this. I don't need it. And this is not canceling it. It's just to get my mind to let it go for a few minutes. So I'll be like, oh, I'd really like that, but I don't need it. Or that would be nice if it happened. Or, oh, I have something else to do. Or I have a bunch of other things on my plate I'm going to get done. I start talking to myself in a way that engages my mind to move on to a different activity. I really like what you said, like, and I think it's important to understand, too, that, like, we all have different things that we develop to make ourselves to, to imagine different ways to avert our attention, right? So that's just awesome that, that that's what you do. Um, I will, whatever it takes for me to imagine, or not imagine, to do something else, like, I will explicitly open a book or I'll call a friend or just to make sure I can let that go and get that desire I can forget about it, you know, so whatever it takes, whatever it takes, you know, whatever, exactly, whatever it takes. And I think that that's what's really confusing as well. People hear like, you have to let go, you have to detach. And it's like, there's as many people as there are, that's how many different ways there are to do it. But the whole point is you just have to sort of, I just think of it as mentally engage with something else. <laughs> Perfect. That's <laughs> However that's you do it, do that. <laughs> yeah. It's, I feel like when I do it successfully, it almost feels like cutting a cord, right? Like, especially for really strong, strong, strong desires, right? Like, like a specific person or like if you're super poor and you want to, uh, and you need a lot of money, it's like, how do you right. stop thinking about it? You know, it's like making a decision that I'm going to think about something else and I'm going to do something else and then taking that action, whether it's imagining I'm going to be thinking about something else and then moving towards that action or like I said, explicitly doing something else. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, sometimes I've done this and I probably don't do this enough, but if I'm really hung up on something and I can't get my mind to stop focusing on it, I will do what you do where I imagine being in the end, but like an hour later, and I am, and I remember an hour later, but you're doing it in the present moment. I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. So at least you have like a buffer of time. So you can remember forgetting. That's awesome. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'll go into a time in the future that I know I'm going to encounter or like the end of the day where I'm like getting into bed and I'll be like, oh my God, I totally didn't think about that all day. That's awesome. I really like this. I like getting these new ideas and stuff. This is awesome. You know, and that's the thing. There's so many different ways. Like 
imagining what are we doing we're feeling and we're living in the end right there how many different ways are there to do that you can right. use your sense of touch taste smell uh what you know and it's the same thing with you know inner conversations whatever there's so many different ways to do this stuff to let go to imagine the end to live in the end um to suspend your judgment and logic and not think it's just it's amazing so it's not all about one that's not like one thing and that's it right a lot of people say what how do you do it uh, when i man when i write my lists down and i'm like i, I received my cup of coffee right and it works to like how long did you write this sentence for and did you imagine after right. there's so many different ways like i test it i'm playful with it i want to prove this to myself like and that was the attitude i had and not it from the beginning because i was careful and meticulous because so i didn't hurt my my faith but eventually i i you know, proved it to myself enough that I wanted to just test it and master this stuff. Yeah. And I think too, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when people are relatively new to this, um, I don't think they, they really know that they're not focusing on living in the end. I think they think they are, but they're still focused on the problem. And the only way you're going to figure this out is proving it to yourself. And you are absolutely allowed to prove it to yourself. You can test this. It's not like against the rules. Um, you can actually be like, I want to see how this works and you can get it to work. But don't just do it once. Do it twice. Do it 10 times. Do it 100 times. Do it 1,000 times. Because I think um, you, you start to realize I'm not living in the end only when you live in the end and it works. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's just like you're just telling somebody and it's hard to you know talking about it is not the same thing as doing it that's right yeah it's just you know practice keep doing it like you said a thousand times i do it every single day still because i just not i mean i love it right it's amazing to see manifestations it's amazing to see the world you know move to my mind and then on top of it i'm building my faith i am um finding out different ways and methods that work well for me and so, yeah, I think that's like really, really critical. And if you can get that down, then, uh, you know, you'll prove this to yourself. And then you have the solution to every single problem. Every single problem. Yeah. There's, and it, because every problem has an end, if you really think about it. And you just go to it now, and then it sort of like pulls you there almost. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Cool. And, and, yeah. And like the one last thing is like that imagining only one big thing like when i imagine a ton of different things i may not see it manifest within one day but if i'm continuously imagining so many different things all the time i will inevitably experience these things so i'm playful i imagine great things i test it and i just let it unfold you know so that's it yeah and then yeah so if you're doing like 10 a day and you're only getting like a three for this one and seven they start to overlap and then you're still like showered in them i have um <laughs> Just really quick, it's kind of like a running joke with my friends. Like, I can't stop bringing money in. Like, it just seeks me out and finds me. And I talk about it like that. And I, I don't know exactly how I shifted it. I did imagine being very abundant. I imagined it a little bit too well. And now I'm just like, I say like money is like an avalanche. It just comes to me. It shows up. People hand it to me. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's just really weird, actually how vastly different it is um from how people think about money to just you know it's like everywhere i go there's money being handed to me so if i can do it you can do it um but i just imagine myself being really abundant and being provided for at all times and it I, it took it a little literally <laughs> That's amazing. It's, like, it's like a dad with a wallet like life it's like here you want you want 20 dollars i'm like no thanks I'm, okay i'll take it thanks <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, cool. So we hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, it's been really nice having you and on this channel, and I'm glad to have been on your channel as well. So thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. So you guys, happy manifesting. Keep practicing. And uh, if you you know like our channels, please subscribe. Uh, and Joseph, Joseph is a coach now, so please uh, look at his information. I am also a coach. Um, you can check out my website. I have a wait list. It's going to be a while, but <laughs> you can still check it out. <laughs> persist. That's the last thing. Just persist. Just persist. Yes, exactly. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.